Hey, Steve here from Post Processing Mastery. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to process a sunrise photo in Photoshop using luminosity masking, among other techniques. But before we get started, if you like this video and you want me to keep making more just like this, then remember to hit that thumbs up button, give this video a like in YouTube, just to let me know that you're enjoying these videos and you wanna see more. And if you wanna be notified in YouTube every time I publish a new video just like this, then remember to subscribe to my channel as well. So with that said, let's move on over to the screen where I'll run you through this next video. All right, so the image we have on screen at the moment it was sent in to me by James Roos. So thanks James for sending this one in. Uh, it's a beautiful sunrise image. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot that we can do here, I think. Um, it, there's a lot of potential in this image. It's a beautiful scene, beautiful sunrise colors. So I'm sure we're gonna uh, yeah, end up with a really nice finished result. So I'll kind of work through a, a quickened version of my six stage workflow. Um, and I'll be using the luminosity panel as well uh, because that's gonna help speed things up. I think the sweet spot for these videos I'm finding is between 10 to 20 minutes. So hopefully we'll kind of fall within that range. Um, so yeah, with that said, let's uh, let's crack on and uh, let's run through and hit the main points of the workflow that are gonna give us the biggest impact. So I've already opened this in Photoshop. I've kind of just gone straight through uh, Camera Raw just to literally load it into Photoshop. I haven't made any changes there. Uh, so we're already really at stage two, which is to create an even exposure. Now, the only part of this shot that really concerns me is the uh, bright patch over here in the sky. Now, we've only got the single exposure, so we can't do any luminosity masking for like to, to blend bracketed exposures in uh, and the issue that you usually find when trying to create like a faux uh, darkened exposure so in the luminosity masking panel here we've got the option to create like a, a one-stop two-stop or three-stop darker version of this uh, of this uh, layer uh, when it's so bright there and there's uh, you know, only really a tiny bit of detail in those highlights to pull back it ends up looking quite muddy and if we do actually blend that detail back in then it just looks darker than the rest of the uh, the beautiful sky and all the colors um, that we have so yeah it just ends up looking weird so what we'll actually probably do is um, kind of a variation on my sun blur technique which is to um, you know copy and paste a bit of the sky and blur it to kind of add a bit of color and texture back into that area but you know we're not going to go too far and try and kind of paint the whole thing in and pretend it's not the brightest part of the shot because yeah I think that works really well as a uh, as the main source of light for the shot. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's do that bit first. So I think um, the first thing that I'll do here is create a new layer. And I'm just going to use the lasso tool here to just grab a bit of this sky and I'll copy uh, copy and paste and I'll just move it over here and this looks pretty crude but just bear with me if you haven't seen me do this before uh, so I just need to grab the Gaussian blur and yeah 200 pixels is already well that's kind of roughly where we want to end up but you know if we were going to come from uh, yeah, for the sake of demonstration, if we're going to come from like a lower value here, what we'd want to do is just slide this slider up until we kind of get the general gist of the color, but we kind of lose lose the detail really. Um, so anywhere around here is going to work just fine, I think. So I'll click OK. And now we can see here there's just a little patch that hasn't quite taken on the same amount of color there so I can actually transform this so I'm just going to press command or control T to transform this blurred bit of color and just stretch it out a bit further in that direction so it's pretty crude uh, so far but you know already it doesn't look too bad as just a quick fix um, so what I will do is just reduce the opacity here to blend it in a little bit better and you'll notice as well if I turn this layer off and on that we're bleeding over into the mountains. I actually quite like that 
as an effect and it's the basis of my sun blur effect or technique which is also found in the luminosity panel uh, if you want to eliminate that then one option would be to try some of these blend modes here so multiply or darken are probably your two best bets um, so if we use multiply for example this is this is how it ends up looking darken is probably the sort of the cleanest but it can end up washing out some of the detail in the clouds there um, or maybe even some of these other ones down here but um, they're a bit more hit and miss actually linear burn seems to do all right let's stick with that I think and just for uh, just for the sake of keeping everything in order we probably need to do a similar thing down here in the reflection so I'll just actually copy this and I'll drag it down here that probably does the trick to be honest um, yeah so we'll leave it there uh, let's just group these together to make it easy to turn them off and on again all right so the next thing that I want to do so we've got a little bit of detail in there we can work with that later and make it look um, you know to really perfect it later on uh, the next thing I want to do is just brighten up this tree line and this uh, dark side of the mountains here uh, for this I probably can use the uh, create exposures button in the panel here to create a faux exposure uh, of probably two stops will do us uh, what this is doing essentially is duplicating the background layer and uh, running the camera raw filter on it and increasing the exposure in that camera raw filter so here we have the original and now this is our bright exposure so it's as if we've taken uh, bracketed exposure now I might create my selection is that, no actually I'd like okay let's just invert the mask and create a selection from here uh, so that we can isolate the mountain area and brush this effect in so I've got the previews turned on in the luminosity panel and I want to uh, load a selection that's going to isolate the darkest parts of the image so I'll probably start at the dark end and go for a 5 here and yeah that looks like it's going to do the job so we're isolating those mountains pretty nicely I'll click use mask and I'll press command H or control H if, if you're on a PC um, so that we're hiding the marching ants but they're still visible uh, but they're still active so the selection is still loaded um, but we just can't see it so with a white brush on a 30 something percent opacity I'm just going to brush into the mountains here and just reveal some of this brighter layer we can see here that was actually a good decision because that tree line goes all the way across in front of this mountain here just to add another layer of detail so Maybe we'll do a little bit down here as well just to bring this through okay so we're in a pretty good place already I think uh, let's deselect that selection so command or control D Whenever you're working with luminosity selections and you're hiding the marching ants, it's always a good idea after everything you do to press Command or Control D on the keyboard just to deselect the selection so that when you try and do something else and it's still you've still got an active selection but you've forgotten about it, and then you know, it can just get really confusing uh, pretty quickly. Otherwise, okay. Uh, anyway, I'm rambling. Let's uh, see how long the video is so far. Eight, nine, eight minutes. 59 let's move on <laughs> uh, okay so we've got an even exposure now um, let's have a look at some color tech uh, some color work so that would be the next stage of the workflow now I'm not going to do any color correction as such um, but I've got a feeling that this image will uh, respond nicely to a bit of a boost in the red channel because we've got some nice pink 
and red colors in the clouds there. So I'll just select the red channel from a curves adjustment layer and I'm just going to push that curve up a little bit. And as I do that, we can see the effect it's having. It's actually really quite, quite a nice effect, I think. So depending on your creative uh, preferences, you may want to push this further or not quite as far as I have, um, but that's up to you. There's no right or wrong answer really there. Uh, so I think that's all I'll do there. I don't want to really correct those nice sunrise colors and make it look like a daytime shot. That kind of defeats the point of waking up early. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's move on to adding some contrast. So I usually do this with the levels adjustment. Um, and what I'll do, because I'm not sure what area, whether the sky or the mountains or the foreground, I'm going to work on. I'm just going to play with these two control points on the levels adjustment and just see what they do and then pick an area to uh, to keep this effect in when I find one that looks good. So that's actually quite nice. The foreground here isn't overexposing and the mountains here look pretty nice. Um, the sky is overexposed so I don't want to use this in the sky really. Uh, so let's keep it here and we'll use this just in the foreground. So I'm going to invert the layer mask. Got that white brush still. And I won't use luminosity selection this time to brush through. Um, don't think we really need that because we're not really pressing up against any edges that are going to be affected um, by this. So, okay, we have overexposed that little patch of sky reflection here. So I'll just remove that just with the black brush in the mask. Same here, probably. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see if we can add an adjustment that's going to make the sky pop a little bit. So I think we can go a bit darker here with this midpoint control point. Probably don't want to do too much with the white point control point. So let's leave it there. Invert the mask again. Now we probably do want a luminosity selection here. Um, so let's see if we can isolate the sky. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna load a um, shadow selection because that seems to give us the best contrast between the sky, which is nearly black, and then the mountains. Uh, and then I'm gonna invert it and adjust from here. So because the sky is nearly white now, I can use these modification buttons and it shouldn't affect the sky really too much at all. Still not gonna be the perfect selection, but I think it might give us just enough isolation um, yeah, so let's use this. So let's go with this. So click use mask, that loads it as a selection. And now with the white brush selected, I can just brush this effect into the sky. Like so. Now I want to be careful not to make the sky darker than the foreground because the foreground is a reflection and it's usually going to be darker than the sky in this case. So just add a little bit of this darkening effect in here to the reflection. Okay, now let's see the overall effect of this. And I quite like it. Now one thing that I'd like to try, this might be a bit of an experiment. Actually, strike that. I'll do that after this very next thing because it's going to be part of the same adjustment. So 
the uh, what I want to do now because we've got this patch over here um, of bright overexposed slightly sky I'm going to use my sun blur technique to add a bit of haze in there so if I I've just added an empty layer and I'm going to sample so I'll hold on the keyboard alt or option just going to sample a sort of bright pinky kind of color from the clouds here and on 30% opacity brush I'm just going to dab that there now that's quite a nice um, adjustment just as a just as a sort of a hazy effect but what I'm actually going to do is reduce the opacity even more so I'm going to add more of this effect in over here on the left where the sun actually is coming from and then over here on the side of this mountain I'm going to add a bit in as well just to kind of give that effect of the sun shining across and hitting that rock face now that's quite strong of an effect so that's why we have this opacity slider here so we can just blend that effect in to make it a bit more subtle and the other option would be actually if we wanted to change the blend mode of this uh, layer to soft light or overlay let's see what that looks like back up on a 100% opacity so yeah actually over here doesn't work because it overexposes over here it works a bit better so let's go back to normal blend mode let's move that down to sort of 30% opacity or so now let's add another layer for the second part which is what I was thinking to do first let's use a soft light and I'll do this I'll see if I can do this through a luminosity selection so I'm going to select a select the highlights if I can um, okay just tweaking the uh, selection here just to kind of try and create a bit more contrast um, sorry I'm going a bit quick there uh, so I just hit that levels button here so what, what happens if I've got a selection preview active I can hit the levels button and just tweak the levels here to create the contrast that I need uh, so I'll use this command H and I'll just brush through onto that edge there so that looks pretty pretty good I think and it's just adding another dimension to the shot just putting that colored light over there and maybe we can just extend it across the sky and so I think we're at a pretty good stage so let's just again compare this to where we came from so this is the original uh, layer that I brought in or the original raw file and here's where we've taken it so we can add a bit more contrast in so it's quite you know We've, we've brightened this uh, tree line and the mountains quite significantly so we might you know let's let's just see maybe if we can reduce the opacity of this brightening layer just to see if that looks any better yeah I, mean, I don't think it looks bad um, actually one thing that I have noticed here is that it's adding a bit of funny color this uh, this light layer um, so I'll add a layer mask and I'm just going to remove this effect from here it's just making making the colors look a bit funny that's better and actually one thing that we would want to do right at the end is just get rid of that dust spot up there uh, just using the healing brush tool just on an empty layer um, but otherwise yeah from here on in it's pretty much uh, just down to creative license you, the autumn effect might look nice let's see if we can try that just before we sign off um, so I've got a button here in the luminosity masking panel to add an autumn effect layer so 
that's added an amazing amount of glow way too much but we can pull that back a bit even as you know even something like 30 percent it's just added a nice uh, dynamic to that shot now so um yeah you know if that's what you like then go for it um what i might do actually i do like it but i might just increase the opacity and then just brush this out again from these darkest parts so like this Now again, if this were my shot and I was sort of processing it for either a full walkthrough demo or for my own portfolio, I probably would spend up to an hour just uh, indulging myself in uh, all these little micro contrast adjustments all around the image just to make every little bit pop. But in terms of uh, you know what I can show you in this quick 20 minute video, I think we've hit on the main points really, uh, which is the, um, yeah, the, the, the highlight area up here in the sky just the general contrast adjustments, adding that warming curve, and then adding the light to that uh, mountain side there, just to add a bit of dynamic uh, or dynamism or dynamicism, whatever the word is there. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found this video useful. And like I said at the start, if uh, if you like this video and you want to see me do more, then remember to just hit that like button on YouTube so that I can uh, see. And get a gauge for how well these videos are going down and if you want to get notified each time i post one of these videos on youtube then remember to hit subscribe to subscribe to my post processing mastery channel so with that said thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video